Every 70s and 80s, Aussie kid with migrant parents tell the same embarrassing lunchbox story. How the Fokasha or Banmi or Madzo singled them out in a playground. How the other kids turned their noses up and insisted that their dumpling sushi or babag ganosh made them smell. How all they ever wanted was a chum sandwich like the other kids. But Ima, Mama, Ami thought that was like eating cake for lunch. Australia has come a long way in the past 30 or so years. Lunch boxes are known as varied as the food we eat at home. From Vietnamese to Korean to Polish to Chinese, Italian, Creole, and on and on. Most Australian taste bud travel far and wide in any given week. Even the smallest shopping mall has a food court that offers more than one international cuisine with Indian, Thai, Chinese, and Japanese being perennially popular. The Chinese started a love story. The Australian food scene has been evolving in pattern with migration since Chinese gold rush. Prospectors began sharing food in the 1900s. Chinese restaurants emerged as a commercial enterprise on the Victorian gold fields, says Barbara Nicole in her paper Sweet and Sour History, Melbourne's early Chinese history. In the first half of the 20th century, the Chinese restaurant was one of the most visible symbols of cultural diversity is in Sydney. By, ni- by 1800, one-third of all cooks in Australia were Chinese, operating cook shops to serve Chinese diggers a hot meal from the back room of other businesses. The majority of Chinese settlers came from southern China's Guangdong province, so Cantonese food was on the menu. Little wonder then that the cook were soon serving, from, uh, serving people from all nationalities, not just the Chinese. Even when the white Australia policy abruptly drew a halt to Chinese immigration in 1901, special visa favors were made for Chinese chefs. By the 1930s, cook shops had evolved into standalone restaurants. 18 were listed in the street directories in 1820, and Nicole notes that they were frequented by city worker students, recently arrived refugees from Europe and Melbourne's bohemian community of artists and writers. Cantonese fried egg noodles with soy sauce, it's not secret why Chinese cookhouses were soon serving non-Chinese customers. Hello irresistible flavor source Alan Benson. The same was happening in Chinatown in Sydney. As Nicole said during a national rivalry of Australia presentation, In the first half of the 20th century, the Chinese restaurant was one of the most visible symbols of cultural diversity in Sydney. Thank you